Since the original Pixel, the special sauce for all of Google's phones has been its software. We've seen this throughout the years in its cameras with things like HDR Plus processing and Google's potent night sight mode. And more generally with features like call screen, live translate, and the recorder app. But on the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro, thanks to a new Tensor G3 chip and a renewed focus on machine learning, it feels like Google's latest flagship phones are taking some of the buzz from the recent AI hype cycle and turning it into tools you'll actually want to use. Pixel 8 and 8 Pro don't look terribly different from last year's phones, but you will notice a small number of tweaks and improvements on closer inspection. The corners are a touch more rounded, and Google deleted the small chin below the screen by making its bezels a uniform size all the way around. One notable change is that the Pixel 8 has shrunk a bit to a 6.2 inch screen, down from 6.3 inches on the Pixel 7. This is something I can get on board with because the phone is now more compact and easier to hold without straying too far into tiny handset territory like on the iPhone mini 13, which was canceled for its sins, RIP. Meanwhile, the 6.7 inch Pixel 8 Pro has received other tweaks, including a new matte finish on its back and an almost completely flat display instead of the curvy sides on the previous models. The camera bar has also been streamlined to feature a single lens cover for all of its cameras and a new temperature sensor. But regardless of which model you're looking at, both phones sport a solid build made from Gorilla Glass Victus with IP68 ratings for dust and water resistance and in-screen fingerprint readers. As for the screens themselves, Google is using actual and super actual branding to describe the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro's displays, and I kind of hate it. Don't get me wrong, they look great, with peak brightness of 2000 or 2400 nits depending on the model. They're even better looking and more viewable outdoors than before. My issue is that I just don't want to live in a world where every single component on a device needs to have a catchy name with nebulous definitions. We have Retina displays on iPhones, Pixel Sense screens on surfaces, and now actual panels on Pixels. It's too much. That said, I have noticed in Google's quest for precise, realistic colors, which is what its actual branding is supposed to suggest, some hues and tones appear more muted on the Pixel 8 than on rival devices. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, it just may result in things like food looking a bit more appetizing on competing devices. The Pixel also has a slightly lower resolution display than the 8 Pro and a narrower range for its variable refresh rate. Packing a new Tensor G3 chip and either 8 or 12 gigs of RAM depending on the model, the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro's performance feels like it has gotten a noticeable boost compared to the previous generation. The Pixel 8 Pro has also gotten a big boost in the storage department with support for up to one terabytes. Sadly, the same can't be said for the Pixel 8, which still tops out at 256 gigs. Of course, horsepower is more than just clock speeds and benchmarks. Google claims the Tensor G3 runs more than twice as many machine learning models on device compared to the Pixel 6's G1 processor. Now that figure is kind of difficult to put into perspective, but with the arrival of features like Magic Editor that use generative AI to manipulate photos, now I actually care about how powerful a chip's NPU actually is. Currently, when tweaking a photo or using AI to create a new wallpaper in Android 14, there's a solid 1-2 Mississippi before I can see the results. That's understandable considering the novelty of the software, but given how often I've been using all these features, I'm already dreaming about making them work just a little bit faster. But nowhere on the phone is Google's improved software and AI more evident than when shooting photos and videos. In addition to new sensors that include a 50 megapixel main camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide, or a 48 megapixel ultra wide and a 48 telephoto with a 5X zoom on the 8 Pro, the Pixel 8 delivers a fresh suite of tools for making everything you capture just look better. The most impressive new feature is easily Magic Editor, which combines lasso and content aware fill capabilities, similar to Photoshop, but in a single place right on your phone. All you have to do is highlight something with your finger and then you can choose to delete it, like in the case of a distracting element, or just move it somewhere else entirely, at which point the Pixel uses AI to fill in any holes. It sounds simple in theory, but for anyone who's ever tried to crudely cover up a blemish with the clone stamp tool in Photoshop, you kind of know it's not quite that easy. But the Pixel makes it seem like it is and the results are surprisingly good. The caveat is that in order to use Magic Editor, you first need to back up your pic in Google Photos. So if you run out of storage space or don't have a good data connection, you might be in for a minor headache. For example, check out this picture I recently took at a wedding. Even before I edit it, it looks great, which is a testament to Google's excellent image processing. Then, thanks to Magic Editor, I had no trouble moving small distractions like a neon exit sign. 
This results in a photo that draws your attention back to the bride and the groom exactly where it should be. And for anyone who's ever been annoyed by a group pic that was ruined because one person was frowning when it happened, there's best take. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Instead of shooting a single group shot and just calling it a day, best take can look at a series of images, recognize people's faces, and then give you the option of putting whichever reaction you want on each person's head. Granted, it's not perfect, and depending on the composition of the photo, you might notice some small bumps around people's necks and shoulders, and maybe some flyaway hairs. But it's good enough that people might not notice unless they're actively looking for flaws. You just have to remember to shoot more than one photo at a time. But you're already doing that anyways, right? Right. However, the Pixel 8 Pro takes things even further with the addition of Pro camera controls. Now, this is something I've personally been hoping to get for a while now. And even though Google certainly took its time making it happen, the results are solid. You can activate Pro controls by tapping on the settings icon and then switching over to the new Pro tab. Then you can tap the button in the bottom right to adjust things like file type, shutter speed, white balance, and more. There's even a manual focus option that includes focus peaking to show you what's sharp and what isn't. Video is also getting some big improvements too. Audio Magic Eraser does an impressive job of eliminating distracting ambient noises from your clips. Now, it's not as good as having dedicated external mics and a full-time sound editor, but if all you want to do is make things easier to hear, this is a big help and it just fits in your pocket. Let me show you what I mean. So I've handed over the Pixel 8 Pro to one of our video producers and you should be getting a sample of what video on the Pixel 8 Pro just sounds like normally. And now here's how it sounds with audio matrix racer on set to auto. Now, of course you can set it to isolate specific things like wind noise or other effects, but that takes a little bit of extra work. Now the downside to a software first approach is that things take a bit more time. Some of the Pixel 8 Pro's most promising features like zoom enhance and video boost with night sight won't be available at launch and they aren't scheduled to arrive until a feature drops sometime in December. Now, it's possible that this is just a result of longer pipelines for software development, but I really hope this doesn't become a trend. Cause it's just kind of a shame that everything isn't ready on day one. More generally, Google's HDR Plus and low light modes are as good as it gets. Shots taken with Night Sight were routinely sharper, brighter, and more detailed than one I got from an S23 Ultra. And while its 5x optical zoom isn't quite as long as the S23 Ultra's 10x, it often feels more usable, especially when you're shooting indoor events. Regardless, between its upgraded sensors, Google's excellent image processing, the new Pro controls, and a fresh kit of AI-powered tools, the Pixel 8 Pro feels like the most powerful smartphone camera on the market. And despite having one fewer lens and fewer features, the regular Pixel 8 isn't far behind. The AI-powered functions don't stop there, though. If you feel like creating a custom wallpaper, you can simply generate one based on a few adjustable parameters. It's an interesting way to create a unique backdrop, but as evidenced by the awkward looking hands on the one I made, it still succumbs to a lot of the pitfalls that often plague AI art. When you want to save some time, you can also ask the Google Assistant to summarize an article from the web. Or you can ask it to read the story aloud, which creates a new audio pop-up so you can listen while you go back to multitasking. It's kind of nice. It's like having the ability to turn every article into an audiobook, which is just super convenient. That basically makes the entire internet a podcast. And if that's not enough, you can have the assistant translate stories into another language at the same time too. Thanks to the Tensor G3 chip, Google also says the Pixel 8 supports more natural voice and text recognition, which powers features like a proofreading tool in Gboard and improved assistant voice typing across multiple languages. Unfortunately, the only other language I speak is Mandarin, and I don't speak it all that well, and it's not even supported just yet. So I'll have to check in again on this when that gets added. Lastly, Google says that by using a new algorithm alongside upgraded hardware, Face Unlock is significantly faster and more secure than before. And in my testing, that increased speed definitely checks out. And a few times when I set the phone down on a wireless charging pad, it automatically unlocked from six feet away when I walked in the room. So facial recognition seems to have been improved as well though you still have to press a button to get past that lock screen. The one issue is that during setup, I found you need to be in a really kind of bright room, otherwise you'll run into a bunch of errors and you'll just be asked to try again. Lastly, while it doesn't have anything to do with AI specifically, there's also a new temperature sensor on the Pixel 8 Pro that at launch can be used to measure drinks and whatnot. And in the future, if granted permission by the FDA, Google's hoping you'll be able to use the sensors as a thermometer for people as well. It's a nice though, not terribly essential new feature, Though I imagine it will come in handy for parents of small children like me who are constantly living in fear that their kid is coming down with something. 
As for battery life, while the Tensor G3 has given the Pixel 8 a big boost to its AI capabilities, it's also provided a small bump in longevity too. On our standard video rundown test, the Pixel 8 lasted 20 hours and 16 minutes, which is a two hour increase over last year's phone. The Pixel 8 Pro fared even better as it lasted 21 hours and nine minutes versus 1642 for the P7 Pro. On top of that, wire charging is now slightly faster at 27 watts for the Pixel 8 and 30 watts for the Pixel 8 Pro. However, because you don't get a power adapter in the box, you will need to buy an appropriate charging brick separately. The biggest upgrade across the entire device though is probably Google's pledge to give the Pixel 8 line seven years of software and hardware support. That includes Android updates, monthly security patches, and regular feature drops from now until 2030. And while it remains to be seen how these phones are gonna hold up after all that time, it's hard to be salty about having the longest support commitment of any Android phone not named the Fairphone 5. Now, after having used the Pixel 8 for about a week, I've started to think about all the phones that came before it. Back in 2018, when the Pixel 3 came out, that was the first time I felt like Google's software first approach to phone design really started to come together. And now on the Pixel 8, between the Tensor G3 and all the compelling new tools that chip is powering, Google feels like it's once again using AI to level up its playbook. More importantly, it's doing so in a more tangible and practical way than services like ChatGPT or Midjourney. The Pixel 8 delivers AI right in the palm of your hand that makes your photos look better, makes your video sound better, news easier to digest, and your drunk text easier to understand. And with even longer software support, there's a pathway for the Pixel 8 to get better down the line. It's a bit of a shame that both the Pixel 8 and the 8 Pro now cost $100 more than before. But just like everything else, I guess phones aren't immune to inflation. And that price is even higher for people on Verizon who want support for millimeter wave 5G, as Big Red's version of the Pixel 8 starts at $799 instead of $699. Still, the less expensive new Pixel comes with an upgraded main camera, better battery life, and a more refined design. Not to mention Magic Editor, Best Take, and a bunch of other AI tools. But despite the price hike, the Pixel 8 still feels like a great deal. And I consider its slightly smaller screen an upgrade in general wieldability. It's a nearly ideal small Android phone. Then we come to the Pixel 8 Pro, which is even more impressive. Google's phones already took some of the best photos you could capture with a pocket-sized device. And now with the power of AI and a full suite of upgraded sensors, the Pixel 8 Pro is basically unmatched when it comes to overall photography prowess. Now for the past three years, I've been using some kind of big foldable as my daily driver, but the Pixel 8 Pro is the first handset that has me wanting to go back to a traditional glass brick. The real magic of the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro though, is that even if you don't know or care how AI is impacting its software, Google's latest tricks are too enticing to pass up. Let me know what you think. Are you finally on board the AI bandwagon with the Pixel 8? Or are you still waiting for some sort of newfangled feature to really float your boat? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned to Engadget for more news, videos, and reviews.